Honeybees are one of the most important insect species and play a vital role in human food supply. We need bees to survive, and bees need beekeepers. They are dedicated caregivers, keeping bees healthy and alive. These days, beekeepers aren't just hobbyists. Uh, once you get into bees, it's a, a bit of an addiction. Uh, very few people ever leave the, the, uh, the trade once they, they get into it. This is Paul Kelly. He's a beekeeper at the University of Guelph, where he manages hundreds of bee colonies. That's more than 20 million bees, and their lives are in his hands. Well, our mandate is research and education on honeybees specifically. Now there are lots of issues with bees, and so our research has become much more important, and uh, we have a lot of work to do since there's a lot of problems that bees are experiencing. Paul has an important job. Commercial agriculture relies on beekeepers to make sure there are enough healthy bees out there. They keep colonies robust and protect them from disease. One third of what we eat is dependent on bee pollination, and honeybee populations have been on the decline. Honeybees are very important for the honey that they produce that everybody knows about, but uh, they're also very important in their food production systems and in producing food for wildlife and other non-human species. Bees pollinate a wide variety of plants. About a third of the food that humans eat benefits from honeybee pollination. Without honeybee pollination, we'd be basically eating porridge. No milk to put on it, no berries, uh, no yogurt. So they are very important for our diet. Without bees, important crops are not pollinated. This includes the foods that cows eat. No food for cows, no milk for us. This is no laughing matter. Harsh winters, mites, and other factors can threaten populations. So there's a lot of pressure on beekeepers, especially in the spring after cold winters. It's been six months since we had uh, put the girls to bed and uh, we never know what we're going to see until we come and open them up in the spring. We've seen a bit of flight, so we know there's some bees there, but we uh, like to get in and have a, have a good look at them now. It didn't look too promising from the activity level. Ooh, that does not look good at all. Well, that's a sad sight there. There's, we've got all these dead bees here, the carcasses there, they're spread over an area like this. It was actually a fairly strong colony at one point, but they're all dead. There's not a live bee. There might be the odd bee coming in to try and steal some honey out of here, but the rest of them are dead. Wow, this one looks good. I think they should be uh, a great looking colony. Lots of activity there. There's guard bees stationed here. Those guard bees will check out every bee coming back to make sure it's the right bee coming in the hive. And foragers coming back with pollen. It looks very promising. I think this should be good. So puff some smoke, get those guard bees chowing down on honey. Oh yeah, look at this. Oh wow, fantastic. Fantastic. We got bees from here all the way over to here. So the whole hive is full of bees. Overall, the hives are doing well, and getting a view inside the colonies themselves is an amazing way to get a better understanding of what's unique about honeybee communities. Well, people often look at beehives as a model of what human-sized society could be. Bees all work together uh, towards a common goal, and they uh, defend the hive, they keep the hive warm, they protect the hive from diseases, and they, they communicate with each other to help each other out in finding uh, flower resources. That's why they do the bee dance, is to indicate where to go. Right now the guard bees are stationed just inside this entrance here, because that's where most of the activity of the bees coming and going is. And other ones are foraging, you can see the pollen coming in. Uh, they need that pollen to feed, oh, there's another solitary bee trying to get in and steal some honey. I don't see one drone or one male bee there. Those are all workers. They're the ones that uh, are able to sting, but as you can see, they're really not so bad. They're quite gentle. So the queen will be in there somewhere and we might be able to find a drone or two, so why don't we take them apart and have a look? Hmm. 
whale finder. And there she is, right there. She's laying eggs in this area right here. Well, there she's gonna lay an egg. She's, right now she's got her abdomen down in there. And out oh, she's gonna move on, lay another one somewhere else. There she goes, laying another egg. Oh, this is great. These are some amazing little workers and Paul is thrilled that they seem to be thriving. But it's not easy with all the challenges that honeybees face. And the most dangerous threat is pesticides. In 2012, beekeepers started seeing losses of bees early in the spring. Not a time of year that we're accustomed to seeing piles of dead bees in front of the hives, and that's what they're seeing. In these bees were shown to have neonicotinoid residues, and neonicotinoids are an agricultural chemical that's used as a seed treatment on corn and soybeans, canola, and, and other crops. Fortunately, governments are starting to place restrictions on the use of these pesticides with the aim of protecting honeybee populations. But it's still an ongoing issue for beekeepers and for the rest of us. Well, there's lots of ways we can all support uh, honeybee health and vitality. I would say the primary one is planting flowers that benefit bees. Another thing, by purchasing locally produced honey, you're supporting beekeepers in your area and their bees are pollinating your environment. So it uh, not only helps the beekeeper out, but there's some payback there in, in how they benefit gardens and and in local environments. There's a lot of concern with honeybee health right now and so we're getting as much support as we can for our honeybee research program so people can help out that way as well.